Welcome back guys, my name is Patrick and this is the Oilers Rundown. First up today, Kurt Levins posted this information in his Nine Things article on the weekend at the Cult of Hockey. The more I talk with people in Edmonton and elsewhere, the more I realize that the club came much closer to a coaching change than Ken Holland will let on, or that most of us realized at the time. In fact, had the Oilers lost that Calgary game, I very strongly suspect that there would have been a media conference hastily scheduled the next day. Discussions had been had. Displeasures in the state of the club at that moment in time had been stated in no uncertain terms. But at the end of the day, the general manager built the roster and hired Tip and not the coaching staff. While you may not be a massive fan of Ken Holland's work here, I do think he's an honorable man, and he was not prepared to hang Dave Tippett out to dry. I don't know about you, but I can respect that. There was lots of speculation that Dave Tippett's time might be coming to an end, and it looks like it was very close to happening. With the Oilers' current 5-0-1 record, it looks like he's off the hook for now, but the Oilers need to stay on an upward trajectory. Next up, the Oilers announced some roster moves today. Mike Smith was activated off injured reserve. Chris Russell was placed on injured reserve. William Legison was recalled from the Bakersfield Condors. And goaltender Olivier Rodrigue was assigned to the Bakersfield Condors. Miko Koskinen was not on the ice at practice after testing positive on his rapid test this morning. He has officially been placed in COVID protocol and is eligible to return next Monday when the Oilers play San Jose. Edmonton Oil Kings goaltender Colby Hay got the thrill of taking Koskinen's place in practice and hanging out with goaltender Mike Smith. Speaking of Smith, he was sporting some new gear today. It looks like we will get our first look at it in action tomorrow against Vegas. Here's a look at the Oilers' lines from practice. Jesse Pugliarvi was dropped to the third line to play with Nuge and Hyman, and Cassian has been bumped up to the second line to play with McLeod and Drysettle. The only line of thinking I can follow there is that the Oilers are trying to showcase Cassian with stronger players to try and up his trade value. The Oilers have to be looking at trying to move him. What he does can be replaced with players at a much cheaper cap hit. Yesi I can see as a good fit with Nugent Hyman, so I don't mind them trying that. I just hope Tippett can make up his mind and stick with it for a few games. The chemistry can't always be instant, and you have to give players some time together to mesh. The Oilers have 40 games in 81 days, so it's going to be a marathon, and it's going to take contributions from all over the lineup. A special note for the Bakersfield Condors, they are currently on an amazing 12-1-4 run in their last 17 games despite multiple players being recalled to Edmonton and dealing with injuries and COVID. GM Keith Gretzky, head coach Jay Woodcroft and his staff, and all the players on the roster deserve a lot of accolades for an amazing performance. What they have all accomplished is incredibly impressive, especially Stuart Skinner, who is 8-0-2 with a 1.97 goals against average and a 9.28 save percentage. We will see Stuart Skinner recalled tomorrow to back up Mike Smith when the Oilers take on the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, that's all for today, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If this is your first visit to the channel and you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing for all the latest Oilers content. You've been watching the Oilers Fanatic. Thanks for being a fan. Have a great evening, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Fanatic Rundown following the Oilers and Golden Knights. Take care, guys.